Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yuri Tsavugrin. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing at the University of Zagreb, uh, Republic of Croatia. And uh, today I will talk about the automatic brightness control for phase analysis in near infrared spectrum. Uh, before getting into the details, uh, here is a brief outline of this presentation. Firstly, I'll give a short introduction to the topic. Uh, after that, I'll talk more about the proposed method for automatic brightness control. Then I'll explain the experiments and show the results of the research. And finally, I'll conclude the presentation and present uh, what will be done in the possibly near future. Uh, if you look at the title once again, uh, we can separate it into three parts the automatic brightness control, the phase analysis, and the near infrared spectrum. I will start with the phase analysis, uh, a wide and well-researched topic present in almost every smart device, from smartphones to surveillance and security systems. To extract the useful information from images or videos, a high quality input images needed for uh, various computer vision tasks, including face analysis. As image and video capturing uh, is, are done uh, under both high and low ambient illumination, instead of capturing regular images taken in the visible light spectrum, the near infrared light spectrum images are captured. And uh, we can see here one uh, example of uh, near infrared image taken. And the idea is to have similar behavior during uh, various ambient light conditions, uh, which can be achieved using uh, near infrared illumination and cameras. The images taken near infrared spectrum are often sparse, have a low signal to noise ratio, are low on contrast and so on. And uh, for that reason, many image enhancement algorithms are implemented to fix up the image. Uh, however, it can be a very demanding task as recovery cannot always be possible due to uh, the noise and more common uh, under and overexposed pixels in the image. The suggested approach is to enhance the scene itself, uh, not the image directly, and it is done with the automatic uh, brightness control. This is a mechanism uh, that adjusts the brightness of the scene through camera parameters and external illumination source. Uh, most often the exposure time and amplification gain uh, are changed while aperture size is fixed. Uh, and as we are in uh, near infrared spectrum, we also use uh, infrared illumination source. Uh, the auto brightness uh, control is primary pre-processing task, so it needs to be fast because it is often implemented in embedded systems in real time. The most common branch in control system theory is the feedback control system. Uh, the reference value R is compared with the measured value Y and uh, their difference error term E produces a change in the system. Uh, the most common uh, feedback, uh, feedback control system is the proportional integral derivative or PID controller. This is a resourceful solution. Uh, it offers fast convergence to target value if the right uh, parameters are chosen and this uh, calculation of these parameters are called the uh, parameter tuning. The mean brightness value is the most uh, commonly used metric in which the average brightness of the whole image or the specific region uh, of interest is calculated, as shown in the image, in this green uh, area. Uh, in, this, uh, in this case, the place in which phase occurs the most. And the mean brightness value is uh, in the region of interest is a good representation of uh, history of statistics for scene uh, brightness and it is used in a uh, proposed algorithm. The PID controller consists of three components, the proportional, integral, and derivative term. Uh, the proportional part is directly, uh, directly proportional to the error term, as its name uh, suggests. 
The integral part is the sum of all errors that occur during the control process, uh, while the derivative part is the difference between the current and the previous error term. The error term E gets uh, in the PID controller, uh, then the P, I and D terms are calculated and added together to form the control signal U. It is straightforward to tune the parameters for linear systems. Uh, however, the image acquisition system is not linear and therefore a different approach is needed. Uh, the system can be linear as a, linearized at the operating point, uh, but for that the precise mathematical model is needed. Uh, moreover, in this system, uh, we have four control signals, uh, the infrared illumination source, the analog gain, uh, the digital gain, and the exposure time control signal. Uh, building a model that consists of four nonlinear and mutually dependent subsystems is definitely not an easy task to do. Uh, most algorithms, uh, including the classic PID controller, uh, changes the gains, uh, uh, illumination intensity, or the exposure time one by one, where the parameter tuning process can be complex in multiple input single output systems like this one, the image acquisition system. Uh, to reduce the complexity of the system, the joint control variable U is presented, and uh, that is called uh, the split range feedback control system. Uh, the variable U is a direct output from the controller, uh, which is then propagated to the four control signals through the respective gain uh, uh, gains uh, that include illumination source, uh, for illumination source, for analog gain, for digital gain, and for the exposure time. And uh, these gains uh, give a different weight and different impact on the image acquisition system. And they need to be tuned properly if you want uh, to get uh, good results, uh, good uh, scene brightness. Uh, instead of tuning 12 different parameters uh, for, each, uh, for each control signal, we would have uh, one PhD controller. So, uh, four PID controllers with each having three gains. Uh, the number of parameters uh, is reduced uh, and uh, it, is, it is easier to uh, find those parameters than, uh, uh, than previous 12 mentioned, than previous 12. Uh, if a sudden mean pixel value peak emerges, uh, occlusion detection mechanism activates. The peak can be the result of the reflection from the closed object, uh, like the hand covering the illumination source and camera, or a change in the ambient light. Uh, to distinguish between the two cases, uh, control signals are set in a way that only light from the infrared illumination source is visible, uh, and that is done by setting the exposure time to a low value. Uh, the mean value is calculated again, and the algorithm pauses until a proper scene illumination is not met by constantly checking the mean uh, the mean pixel value, uh, whether it is low enough, uh, and which is then a result of removing an object in front of the image acquisition system. The comparison uh, on a system response between uh, with and without camera covering detection algorithm can be seen in this plot, uh, in this graph, sorry. Uh, the red plot is a change in mean brightness value without camera covering detection, while the black plot uh, represents the change in mean brightness value with camera covering detection. A blue graph is a referenced value that we have chosen before. Uh, it is seen that the system performs much better with the camera occlusion detection algorithm. Uh, however, although the mean brightness value converges rather quickly, there is a still a big peak and the undershot right after, as it can be seen here. Uh, this is mainly the consequence of the delay present in the system. Uh, this also can be a problem uh, in a system because it can affect stability. And this is one of the non-linearities non non uh, mentioned before that occurs in the system. 
Uh, for the experiments, uh, the listed equipment was uh, used. Uh, the wave uh, the used in this setup was uh, 940 nanometers. Uh, there were several constraints in the system, like uh, 30 FPS uh, frames per second. Uh, also, the image was divided eight by eight tiles. And uh, regarding the region of interest, uh, the outer columns uh, have been omitted because the face is rarely positioned in those edge columns of the image with the current setup, of course. Uh, the main idea of the laboratory test, uh, tests uh, was to examine the convergence speed and the number of oscillations present in the mean brightness value signal. Uh, the result of one of these experiments can be seen in this uh, graph. Uh, to simulate the disturbance caused by the ambient light, uh, we used the second infrared illumination source. Uh, the disturbance was changed in step, in step and uh, ramp uh, matter, manner to see how well the control algorithm would adjust. And the disturbance is shown with the black plot. The reference value is reached in 10 or 15 uh, frames, which can be seen in uh, red plot, which is a mean brightness value. And once again, the blue plot represents the reference value. And through extensive experiments, uh, several interesting things should be seen, are seen. The derivative uh, term had also uh, had little impact uh, on the response function. And the PI controller was enough to compensate for light changes, and the D term was omitted. Also, the analog gain affected brightness changes significantly, and oscillations have shown around the reference value. And interestingly enough, the digital gain didn't cause such behavior. Uh, because of it, uh, analog gain would be held fixed, while the remaining three values would change according to the brightness level. To conclude this presentation, uh, the split range feedback control system with camera occlusion detection is presented. Although the system is complex and uh, non-linear, uh, the performance is stable, uh, the convergence of, um, to the reference value is fast, and the control system is well built for real-time applications. The future work uh, will be uh, based on the calculating the dynamic region of interest in which the face is positioned uh, in which the face is positioned to further reduce an important part of the scene and combine it with the proposed automatic brightness control algorithm to get better and more precise results. And that would be all, uh, folks. Uh, thank you for your attention and feel free to ask questions.